all heard of the word subluxation. If you haven't, you should have. It should be a very common word um, with everybody. I mean, we all have heard of cavities. Everybody should hear of subluxation. Uh, subluxation is probably the most important thing in somebody's health uh, there is. And let me explain a little bit about what a subluxation is. Now, we have to go into a little bit of anatomy first. So I'm going to grab this model. And what this model is, is just two segments of the spine. But this um, is where the subluxation happens, in between two bones or, or multiple bones. But everything in the body is controlled or coordinated by the brain, sitting up top here, sending a message down and out these what are called nerve roots. Now the brain controls every cell, tissue, vital organ, muscle of the body. It controls how we breathe, how our heart works, how we digest, how our immune system works, how we run on the field. Uh, everything you can think of is controlled by the brain. Actually every cell in the body not the, the, the cells that are moving around circulatory-wise, but every cell in the body actually has a nerve from the brain down here connected to it. Most people don't realize that, but every cell has a nerve connected to it. So it's obviously unbelievably important for that communication to happen, or we're going to have a problem, right? We're not going to perform at our, our peak. So a subluxation, uh, what happens with the subluxation is when the vertebra, these are two vertebra, they move out of alignment. Now, well, let me show you why that's important is. I'm going to move this nerve out of the way for a minute, so I want you to take a look. The hole where the nerve comes out, or the foramen, is made up by half of the bottom vertebrae and the top half of this vertebra. Now, when those two bones are aligned, the maximum space for that nerve to come out is available. When a bone subluxates or moves out of alignment, what will happen is it will actually put pressure on the nervous system and it interferes with the function of the brain going to the nervous system. Not a very good thing to happen, I wouldn't think, right? So I'm going to put this nerve back in. There we go. So normally we have all these nerves coming down the spine. Each nerve has its own function and it controls something in the body. So more up in the cervical or in the neck region, you're going to have the nerves that go down into the arms, into the shoulders, into the heart, into the lungs, uh, into the throat, uh, thyroid gland, parathyroid, those kind of things, right? In the lower spine, it's going to be bladder, bowel, reproductive organs, legs, knees, feet. So anytime there's a subluxation, how do you think that's going to affect your body? Is it going to work better? Is it going to be worse? Are you going to be healthier or are you going to be sicker? Well, of course, if there's some kind of pressure there, your body's not going to function normally and it's going to interfere with your normal performance. Kind of makes sense. So when we look at a subluxation, what it is, is when a bone misaligns, it interferes with the normal transmission of the brain going down the spine out to whatever tissue, organ, cell, muscle of the body. Right? There's also the other part of that, it also comes back. So if there's pressure going back, it might not get the signal back up as well either. So a subluxation affects nerves going out, but also information going back in. So very, very important. What I want to show you, if a subluxation happens and if it's not corrected over time, besides the performance and your health will be affected, this spine will be affected as well. So I'm going to show you on this model. What happens chronically with a subluxation is it will put 200 times more pressure on the, these bones and on this disc. And what will happen is it will start shearing down this disc and the disc will actually start becoming thinner. And if it's left even longer, the next thing that will happen is you'll start noticing some spurs or some extra bone growth. And that happens because there's abnormal pressure on these bones and you actually start getting a buildup of extra bone. And it will get to the point where it's so bad where it will actually begin to fuse to the bone below it. 
Now through this whole process, these nerves are getting more and more and more affected and your body's performance is becoming less and less and less. And this is where symptoms can start happening. So it's much better to get it checked out here when we don't have the, the amount of symptoms or the degeneration in the spine as it does down here. Makes good sense, doesn't it? So what I want to do now is I want to go from here and I want to show you just a few x-rays in the cervical spine and in the lumbar spine, kind of what we look for normals and then some, just some examples of what's not normal, okay? All right, we're, we're at the view box where we're going to be looking at our x-rays, but I want to, before we uh, start, I want you to take a look um, at this segment just so we uh, refresh your memory. So what we're looking at again are these are the vertebra, the spinous process, um, and these are the discs. Now on an x-ray, you're not going to see a disc. You're going to see a black space where these are, and you're not going to see the nerves either. What you're going to see is a space. And what we are looking for in the cervical spine is we are looking for a nice, healthy 43 degree curve. That's kind of perfect uh, in nature. That's where the ideal curve of uh, the spine should be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up an x-ray right now and show you uh, kind of what a normal looks like first. So when we look at this, what we're looking at, this is the front, this is the back, these are their earrings. They should have been off, but she had long hair. I couldn't see them at the time. But if you look at it, it has a nice, even curve. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty much what we would call almost perfect. Uh, a few things. She has what is called a little bit of a, a head lean, but well, that's something different. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the path of the actual spinal cord. And that happens right behind the vertebral bodies. So we have it from here, here. And so when you look at this, it looks like a C-shaped curve. That's, that's ideal. And that's kind of what we strive for when uh, we're looking at x-rays or when we're looking at new x-rays that we've taken uh, of the spine. So I'm going to bring up a couple of other x-rays. I'm going to bring up um, a 15-year-old, a 23-year-old, and a 52-year-old. So you can get an idea of the different um, shapes and positions uh, even young or even older um, can have. Okay. So I'm going to start first with a 52 year old and I'm going to show you that there's a little bit of degeneration in the spine. But first of all, let's take a look at the curve and let's compare. Now what I did when I drew these, I just drew the line right on the back of the vertebral body and I did that with this one. Do these two look anything close to the same? No, they don't. And where you can really see a difference is how straight this part of the spine is. And just so happens, look where that, all that degeneration is. So when you look at the vertebral bodies of these, you don't see any really degeneration. You see a little bit beginning, but look at this. And look at this, and that's strictly because of these bones being subluxated, and this starts that process of degeneration. And these two are almost fused together. And this one is just starting. So let's move on. Now we're going to go to, look at that. So now let's look at this. So when I drew those lines, how do those compare? And I'm going to move this out of the way so you can go right up close to this one. Pretty drastic difference. This is actually reversed. And this is actually just at the very tips of these, we're starting degenerative changes. Now, we haven't really talked about how this started. <clears throat> Sometimes we can get in car accidents, uh, poor posture, sports injuries, any number of things. This person just so happens is just poor posture. They sit behind a computer, a laptop, and they do the, the Game Boys or whatever those things are called and the cell phones and they're always texting down like this. So their head is chronically in this position which would make sense but their neck now has turned into this as their normal. If you look again, they're both looking forward. This person's not looking down, they're actually looking straight ahead. 
And so this, at an early age, 23, is pretty young to have a complete reversal of a neck without an injury involved, okay? So now let's go over, we're gonna go over a 15-year-old. And so when you look at that, this is a 15-year-old, and these two look pretty similar. So what path do you think this, this uh, young man is going to if he doesn't get this spine corrected? Well, it's pretty obvious that he's gonna go real close to getting this. Luckily, he's under care, and uh, he's been doing phenomenal. Now, symptoms-wise, for him, he had some things going into his shoulders, um, and he has some breathing problems, and he is actually a uh, water polo player at a very high elite level, and he was actually having to get out of the pool and do an inhaler, and since we've been working on him, he hasn't had any of those episodes, and uh, his coach has actually made note that he's actually getting stronger in his swimming which kind of tells, you know, obvious because this part of the spine controls the shoulders and the arms. And it's kind of important for a swimmer, swimmer to have that. So we've shown you an array of these x-rays from a 15-year-old to a 23-year-old to a 52-year-old, and you can see kind of the differences between those and, and potential from just some simple things of uh, computer work, uh, texting, and it's chronically doing that. And the results if it's not taken care of. Now, luckily all these people are under care and, and that we've made some great changes in their life. So I recommend that you ask your chiropractor questions. You know, do I have a neck like that? Or does my husband or does my mother or my father or specifically do my kids, are they starting this process with the subluxation now? And is there something that we can do to prevent this? So make sure you ask your chiropractor. He'll have some great information specifically on you and of your family.